Today, I've got something really special for you guys. This background right over here is not a picture, it's not a video, it's an actual 3D model being powered by 3JS in a WordPress website. Now, as we scroll down this page, you're gonna see this model start turning around. It's completely powered by 3JS, so if I start scrolling back up, you can see that this model is being very responsive to the way that the scroll is happening. Now, when we reach to the end of the page, it has completed a complete 360 of its rotation. Now, as I scroll up, you're gonna see that whole rotation going in reverse in a complete 360 until we hit the top of the page. Now, this is mobile friendly. It isn't actually mobile responsive. There is a separate control that's gonna help you make this fit perfectly on a mobile screen. So you don't have to worry about it looking all funny on mobile. And it's not gonna slow down your web page as much as you think because the way I built the code, it is completely asynchronous, meaning that it offloads off the main thread. So it's not gonna interfere with how the page is actually loading for your clients. It also comes with a placeholder image and a loading bar which you can remove if you don't want it. So let me show you how easy it is to build this particular effect in Elementor. So here in Elementor Page Builder, all we actually need is one container and one HTML widget. So let me just go and add that now. So there's the container. I'm gonna click on this plus sign, look for the HTML widget. It's over there, click and drag it across until it's in the container and then I'm just gonna let go. Now we're not gonna put in the code just yet. We are going to build out the web page doesn't have to be in this exact order, but for the purposes of the tutorial, that's what we're gonna do over here. So all we're gonna do is just flesh out the rest of this web page, just for some placeholder stuff, and then we're gonna get into the really cool stuff after that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this plus sign, get a new container, make sure that it's full width, and then direction I'm just gonna put in horizontal, and inside here, I'm quickly gonna put in another two containers. So click and drag that across. Then I'm going to duplicate this one so that I have a left and right column. I'm gonna put in an image real quick. So I'll put it right here in the right hand side. Quickly get a title and the text editor. What I'm gonna do over here is give a little bit of space just to move this away from my own navigation menu over here. So on the main container, I'm just gonna to go to advanced, take off the linking and on the top, I'm gonna to give this about a hundred pixels, just like that. And then I'm just gonna put in some example stuff over here. So this image, I'm just gonna quickly select something. I'll take this guy over here, say select. The heading, I'm gonna put it in to center, put it white, and a text. I'm gonna put it center and white. Then the container that this is all in, I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna go over to style. I'm going to choose a color. I'm going to say maybe a 75-ish percent black and the border radius, I'm going to say 10. And then finish this off, what I'm gonna do is just put in a standard box shadow. Now that I have this all in place, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close this main container. I'm just going to duplicate it, open up the second one, swap these containers around. So it's on the other side like that. I'm gonna quickly change this image over here to something else. I'm gonna choose this guy, then close that. First container, I'm gonna duplicate that one move it down to the bottom and then just change this image as well so I'll choose this guy the second container duplicate that because it has the picture on the other side move that to the bottom I'm gonna choose my final image okay so now that I have everything in place for this web page it's time to get to the really cool stuff in the description of this video there's going to be a link that's going to take you to a reference page on my website so let's just go and have a look at that right now so here's that page that I was talking about if you scroll down here's going to be everything you're going to need to build out this 3D model effect. So the very first one is going to be a plugin that's gonna allow you to upload any type of files to WordPress, because WordPress does limit what type of files you're allowed to upload to it. So this plugin takes care of all of that. The second thing is this is a reference site that you can pick your own models that you want to use. They have a lot of free models that you can go and play around with. It is one of many types of sites that are like this. This is a great website, find really cool models that you can play around with. The third button over here is going to be the placeholder image that I used for this tutorial. You can use your own, obviously, but if you want to copy exactly, this is where you can get that image that you can just upload into your WordPress. And then the last one is the exact model of this tutorial. This is going to take you to Sketchfabs and you do have to make a free account with them. But once that's done, you can just download it for free. And then right at the bottom, this is the code that we're going to be using it's going to power up everything. This is quite long and extensive. What I've done is here near the top, away from the actual divs, where we actually start doing all the coding. Over here, I've made a whole bunch of different controls that you can go and change to make your scene perfect to the way that you want it. So you don't have to worry about everything underneath. As an example, right here at the beginning of the script, here's the model URL. 
we're going to give a new model URL so that your WordPress website can go and reference it very easily. Over here, we've got a whole bunch of different camera controls. I'll explain some of them inside the tutorial. Underneath is that blooming effect. So what that means is this shining over here on the edges of this model. You can see it's not exactly just the light source. It is a bit of a glowing effect and that's called bloom. So now we can actually inside the code control the bloom and how much you want if you want any at all on your models. Underneath this is all the lights that I used. I used three lights. I used two directional ones and an ambient one. Now I know this gets very complicated but this really does sell off the effect of something really cool and all the controls for these things you can play around with and you can also just switch off if you really want to. And then the final thing is the background color that you can go and customize any way you want. I know there was a lot to take in but believe me it's going to be all great. Now earlier I said that you're going to have two different controls for desktop and mobile and those are going to be these two over here. It says camera distance factor and you can see that one is for desktop, one is for mobile and you can see that the settings are very different. So in mobile, because the camera is going to be at the same distance away from the model, the model is going to be too big for the screen. So all this is, is pulling back the camera away from the model so that you can see the entire thing. That is pretty much the difference that you're going to need between the two. So that's the only setting that you have to worry about for mobile responsiveness. And again, I have simplified this as much as possible, but still giving you the freedom of all the customizing that you would like. Another quick thing is here inside the lights, you have the light color. Right now it's set to white, but you can go and change it to whatever color you'd actually like and really give a really cinematic look to the background of your web page. And here is the intensity of that particular light. The same thing with ambient light. Now the ambient light is the general light in the whole scene. So if you don't want too much directional and you just want it just bright in general, you can use the ambient more. So again, you can choose the color, the intensity of the light. And then finally, this is more of a background light just to give that little hard edge as well, just to really sell the effect. Again, you have the color and the intensity of how bright you'd like it. It's a lot to take in, I do understand that, but to pull off this code, the way that it was designed is way more complex. So this is as simplified as I can make it, giving you all the control that you would like. So let's go put a model as a background on your web page. So the first thing we're gonna go and get is the model that we're gonna use in the background. Now, if you scroll down right to the last button over here, it's the Steampunk Underwater Explorer that I used. So all you have to do is click that. It's going to take you directly to Sketchfabs. And this is the model that we are going to be downloading. So again, once you've registered, which is for free, underneath the artist here, you just click on Download 3D Model. And then what we are going to be looking for is the GLB file, which is going to be the smallest one that we can find that is something that you're going to have to consider when choosing a model. Don't go crazy in the size of the model because at the end of the day, the user still has to download the model as the background. So although the web page is going to load up and it's going to load up fine, in the background, nothing's going to happen until the model is actually there. So do choose smaller models. So this one will be here at 16 megabytes. So what I'm going to do is it's going to click on download. Now that that's busy downloading, what we're going to get next, if we head back into the resource page, is the very first link, which is the plugin that's going to allow us to upload this file into WordPress. So all we have to do is click on that. It's going to take you into the WordPress repository, which has the file upload types by WP Forms. It's a great plugin to use. Now you can either click on download and upload it manually into your website, or what you can do is in the back end of your WordPress website, all you have to do is click on plugins and say add new. Here in search plugins, you just type out the name of that plugin, which is that file upload types by WP Forms. And this is the one that we are going to install and activate. So as you can see, I've already done so, but all you have to do is say install now and then say activate. Now that you've actually installed and activated that plugin, if we head over to settings, we can go down to file upload types. Here's a whole bunch of extensions that will allow for WordPress to upload. But what you're going to have to do is click on add your custom file types and a pop up at the bottom is going to appear. By this point, you've already downloaded that 3D model. So where you have downloaded, all you have to do is click and drag and let that go inside this window right over here and then just let go. So here you can see it says it's a GLB file. And then you just say save settings. And now your WordPress website will allow GLB files into its media library. So again, all we have to do is click on media. We go back into that window of your desktop 
and you just click and drag that across and you can let go and now you can see that it's loaded up just fine. Now, the next thing we're gonna need is a background image. Here in my resource page, the image that I used for the preloader is this and this is the image that you can download and copy along if you want to. Again, all you have to do is download it and upload it into the media library. Now, the last thing that we need is the actual script. So we scroll down and on the right hand side, you're gonna see this copy button. You just click that. You go into Elementor Page Builder and in that HTML widget, all you have to do is paste it. Now that we have that in place, it's time now just to fill out the required stuff that we need. And what that's going to be is the model and the placeholder image. So in the media library, I'm gonna to go to the placeholder image. I'm gonna copy this URL. I'm gonna go back into the builder and here underneath this comment is going to be the image tag. Here we're going to change the source. So this is the old one that's over there. I'm going to delete that and I'm just going to paste the new source of that picture. Then the last thing we need is in the media library. We're going to click on this model. We're going to copy its URL. And now we just scroll down until it's the actual script and not the ones that it's calling from Java. And this model URL, we're just going to replace this with our new URL of our model and that is it so now if we click publish and we view this in the front end there it is there's a model being rendered just like in the example now as we scroll down you can see that the model is just going to turn around now it doesn't matter how big the web page is everything's calculated for you so it'll always do a 360 no matter how big the page is now what i'm going to do next is i'm going to make a space on this page and i'm going to show you different things that you can do with this model so now you can see the model is clearly visible without the actual web page being in the way. So now, if I go into the HTML widget, let me show you how those controls work. So as we scroll down, just past where we had put in the model URL, here are all those different settings. Let me just stretch this out a little bit, much better. To make the camera go closer for desktop, this is the one you're going to play with. It is going to change per model, but the code will handle everything the same. So if you load up a different model, you are going to just have to play with these two particular settings for desktop and mobile, and then you can change the lighting to suit that model. Every model is different, so you are going to have to play with these type of settings. I also gave you extra settings, this near and far, you should just keep it the same. What happens is the furthest distance that the camera is allowed to see is 3000. That is not in pixels. It's the units used inside 3.js. And what that does is it stops the model being clipped while it's spinning. So it's just making sure that the camera can see as far as possible. The FOV, it's the type of lens that you are using. Here we're using a 55mm, which is almost the standard of the camera world because in the camera world, it's 50. Here for the models, it just works really nicely as a 55. If you make this number smaller, it'll take in more of the view but rather not do it too much because then it starts distorting the model just like as a real camera. But you do have those options here. The ones that I would worry about the most is definitely this distance factor for desktop just to pull the camera back or more forward. And underneath that is the X. That's for left and right. And then the Y is up and down. Now, if we look at this model, you can see it's looking straight ahead. Now, if we wanted to look a little bit more angled, you can go to the script right over here for offset Y and we can put something like say eight. Now that is going to change the distance just a little bit and then you just have to cater for that type of angle. But here is eight, if I go click publish, we go view the model. So now you can see the camera has moved up a little bit and the model's a little bit more on the side. You can put this as far up as you want, say like as a 15 as example, which is a bit much. You can see how it works over there and it still works just fine. But let's say you're happy with this but the model doesn't fit the screen so well. Again, we go back into that script over here and the distance from 32, I'm gonna put it as a 25. If I click publish and go look at the front end, now it's a lot closer. And on mobile, all you do is go into mobile view and then you just play around with the second setting until you're happy that the camera is close enough or further away from the model to fit the screen depending on your model. I couldn't make this automatic because all models are built differently. So to make sure that every model could fit on your web page, I gave you these two controls over here for you to directly manipulate the camera itself. But let's say now you're happy with the way that this model looks, but you want to change the lighting. Say you want you don't want this one so bright, you want it a lot softer. So the very first light, if we go into the lighting section, you can make the intensity from a two to say a one and publish. You can use a lot of decimals over here, so don't be afraid of using decimal points. Now you can see that the light is just a little bit less. 
or if you wanted more, I can say put it to a four, publish, and now you can see it's a lot brighter. So you can play around with a whole bunch of different settings here. But now say you wanted it as a two again, and you wanted to change the color to red, no problem. That's handled right over here. So red is FF0000. So now you can see that that color is red. And again, it's very responsive. So as I scroll down, it works just fine. So you can really set the scene to whatever you like. And the same thing goes with all the other lights here. For argument's sake, let's say that this red was just fine for you but you wanted to bring up the lighting of the entire scene. Again, we go back here into the code and under ambient light from this one, let's just say it's a five. We test out and now you can see that it's lightened up a lot more. And that is the general ambient light and this color you can change as well. And if you want to change the back light, it's the same th principle again. You can change the color there and the intensity. It's all up to you. So let me just reset this back into its normal form. Okay, that's back to reset. I click on the front end there we go there's my original way that i had made this i think that this is just the absolute next level for web pages and again i made this asynchronous so although the models are big they're going to be offloaded away from the main thread so you don't have to worry about the page speed scores being absolutely destroyed by this do factor in the size of the models there are some amazing models out there but they are big they are made for games and cgi so so do consider that when actually choosing your model i hope you liked this video if you did smash that like button and if you haven't subscribed consider subscribing as well that stuff makes a big difference to a small channel like mine. If you have any suggestions or anything, then just put a comment down below. Let me see what I can do. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.